I read a lot of manga, but more specifically, I read a lot of Jump Plus manga. And a question that I get asked all the time is, where do I start? Or how do I even get into manga? And to answer these questions, I'll tell you exactly how I came across it. Nearly two years ago, I was depressed and bored of shit during college, and one day after practice, I came across a little website known as Viz Media. And ever since, I've come to fall in love with it for two reasons. More specifically, for two dollars. Which is the exact amount of money you have to pay every month to have access to just about all of these mangas. And I'm not getting paid to say that fucking obviously. However, you might still say, oh boy, that's a hefty amount of manga to choose from. And after passive aggressively patting you on the forehead, I tell you that you're right. So here's what we're gonna do. Today, I'm gonna make things even easier for you. I went out of my way to make a very special list of the five jump plus manga that I think you should start from or check out. And if you don't, I will passive aggressively pat your forehead again to let you know that I reread these just for you. That's right. I read a total of... 396 chapters just for you. And I find reading to be cringe, so that should tell you that these are good, they're ongoing, they're new, and from start to finish, I can promise you that you're gonna have a great time with at least 2.6 of them. And we'll call it my very own personal Shonen Jump Plus starter pack. You may know some of these, you may not. As always, feel free to skip between any of these timestamps if you ever get bored. And if you disagree or feel like I should have included something else on this list, then just then just, I don't, I don't know, go make your own fucking video then. Have you ever wanted to read a manga that's drawn so well you can literally hear sound effects? Beating the shit out of somebody has never looked better, and if you're looking for a non-stop dose of that sensation, then this manga is perfect for you. Sakamoto Days is about a retired assassin who's now trying to live a normal life as the owner of a grocery store. But not just any retired assassin. This motherfucker used to be the best. I'm talking John Wick basically owning a Walmart. The average day-to-day -day life for Sakamoto consists of committing felonies on aisle 3. And it's great. If you want to talk about motion, I'm pretty sure you won't find any better action paneling than this. There's literally a part where Sakamoto hops on a swagway to beat the living shit out of somebody. There's another part where he literally throws a bullet. He throws a bullet! In case you didn't know, one of my favorite movies of all time is Kill Bill, and I love it for two reasons. One is that it is so over the top and ridiculous, and the second reason is that it will never pretend to take itself seriously, aka what I like to call dumb and fun. And holy shit is this manga some dumb fun. It's a whole manga of the most goofy looking characters having some of the most insane showdowns I've ever seen in my life. And let me explain something to you. If you decide to read this, just know at some point you're gonna find out who this guy is. And just know that afterwards, you and I will then share the same understanding that this is just about the scariest motherfucker to ever exist. There are some characters in this manga that have my fullest permission to use some of the cringiest lines on earth. They're just that cool. Have you ever witnessed murder via pencil? Have you ever gotten so mad in life that you threw grandma? If you need a manga with few words and a whole lot of then I think you should give Sakamoto Days a shot. It's cheesy, it's dumb, and it's got some of the best drawn out fight choreography I've ever seen in my life, especially because I'd say the most recent chapter have been the best ones so far. It's also because I want this girl to step on me. If I were to guess which one of these you've heard of before coming across this video, I'd probably bet my left nut that you've heard of Kaiju number 8. With already having sold over a billion trillion copies and another gazillion videos that have been made about it, this manga is probably the easiest one to recommend. And that's mainly because it knows exactly what you want to see. Do you want to watch two giants beat the living shit out of each other? Well, here you go. Do you want to see this guy use a fucking jet propeller to kick this thing out of the stratosphere? Well, here you go. And not only do you get to see it, the art is guaranteed to make you shit, piss, and cum all at the same time. Kaiju number 8 is about a guy named Kafka Hibino, who always dreamed of being that guy. The one who gets to save the day, the one who gets to be a hero. But instead, those dreams never came true. Now, being at the ripe age of 32, Kafka is actually just a janitor. And not just any janitor, he has to clean up Kaiju Dookie. One of the things that was a breath of fresh air for me was Kafka's maturity. It was really nice that for once, for twice, we get to see a much older shonen protagonist be given the spotlight. Someone who gets it. They get that life sucks and that things are unfair. But all that changes when he basically becomes a kaiju, uh, which in my opinion is way cooler. What this leads to is a nice balance of some good old action shonen manga mixed with this weirdly insightful story about someone getting a second chance in life. Pretty early on, you realize that this is going to be Kafka's last and only chance to ever follow his dreams, even though those dreams kind of make him a little bit of a simp. I don't really have much else to say about 
about this manga because you can take a good look at any of these panels and I'm sure it would be more than enough to prove how fun it was to read something like this. It's literally a manga full of kaiju monsters and trained military soldiers that use like fucking axes with jet propellers and giant laser beams. The other thing is that there's this hilarious contrast between what Kafka looks like in his kaiju form and what his actual personality is like. There's a little over 60 chapters out right now so it's a pretty short read and probably the easiest one to write about in the script. And I would also let her step on me. Alright, so for this one, we're gonna start off with a little bit of a quiz, okay? I'm gonna give you exactly 3.28 seconds to respond to a hypothetical problem. So let's say you live in a world full of magic, and in this world, let's imagine you're a teenager looking to join a very prestigious school for wizardry. Now, in order to get into this hypothetical school, you have to take an entrance exam. And the way they test you on this exam is they hand you a little broom to see if you can fly with it. Are you following so far? Great. So, the reason why this is a trick question is because you now need to come up with a way to use that broom without Without actually having any magic at all. So here are your options. Do you A. Maybe use a potion that temporarily gives you magic powers. B. Have someone else enchant the broom for you. Or option C. Chuck the fucking broom and then hop on it. Mashal Magic and Muscles is about a kid that looks like this, trying to blend into a world that he has no right to partake in. It's a society that solely functions on the use of magic, yet for whatever reason, he wasn't born with any. So to compensate, he decided to train in other ways, and this led Mashal to being pretty strong, maybe even a little too strong. So here's the thing, right? A lot of people will tend to say that this manga is basically one punch man if it took place in Hogwarts, and believe me when I say that's just not the case. What it really is, is... Well, One Punch Man plus Hogwarts, but what it also is, is a good time. As someone who's dead inside, even I found this manga to be hilarious. I mean, Mashal's so strong that he's managed to make anyone and everyone seem like his bitch. In the literal first chapter, this guy tries to use a magic spell on him, and then Mashal proceeds to set it like he's the libero of a fucking volleyball team. And if I had to use one reaction to sum up the experience of reading this manga, it would be this. Regardless of how many times you witness the ridiculous shit that Mashal's capable of, it quite literally never gets old. Like, like, I've seen this dude punch, slap, kick, bitch smack, suplex, every single problem that lies in his way. The manga's entire premise revolves around the fact that these people are wizards, and none of that matters. You could be fucking Voldemort squared, and he will literally take a dump on your dad. I don't even know what that just meant. To be honest, there's something weirdly wholesome about watching a kid try his best to fit in a place that he so clearly doesn't belong to. It's great, there's currently 112 chapters out right now as I'm recording this, and if you're looking to have an easy laugh with a manga that's nearing its last few chapters, then I highly recommend and you check this one out. And also, fun fact, I own the first volume. Alright, picture this. It's about to be one of the biggest and most important days of your life. You are officially starting high school, and filled with nothing but an infinite amount of things to look forward to, like clubs, sports, or that one cute girl that sits across the classroom. Everything you could ever ask for, only to have all of that shattered because you find out that your dad is also planning on starting school with you. And it turns out it's not just your dad. What you actually find out is that your mom, your eight-year-old sister, and your cat that for some reason makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable, are all going to the same school as you, and not just the same school, the same class. And if you think that's an absurd situation to be in, well, so does fucking everyone else. High School Family has got to be just about the most weirdly specific plot that leads to weirdly specific scenarios you probably never thought of. For example, watching your mom try to socialize, or witnessing your dad try to relive his youth. You know that feeling when you watch a really good TV show, and some of the scenes are so realistic that you can't help but cringe and laugh at the same time. I swear to god, there's nothing that's made me feel that way as often as when I started reading this manga. The years that you spend in high school can be so vital. I mean, for some, it's where you find yourself. For others, it's way too late. For some, you're just too young. I mean, this is a cat! And why does he look like that? And as the premise becomes gradually more ridiculous, there really is something that I found special about this manga. It's reminded me of a lot of things that I've wanted to forget, and other feelings that I didn't know I'd miss. To say it's a slice of life would be... Bold. But for me, it was a joy to read. One of my favorite arcs is when the dad tries to join the volleyball team, and over the span of 89 chapters, you watch the club go from angry and confused to almost kind of inspired. You watch this weirdo pour his heart and soul out there, and I couldn't help myself from feeling like it was anything but just beautiful. Again, it's not for everyone, but as someone like myself, who's pretty goddamn funny, it has my approval. It's a very niche kind of humor, and if you're into that, then you'll love it as much as I did. And I'm not gonna lie, some chapters were pretty wholesome, and then other chapters were just... 
Like, what in the fuck? All right, so that was definitely the last recommendation. There's nothing left after that. It's not like I would save the best for last or anything, right? Have I ever lied to you? Be honest, have I ever told a lie before? <clears throat> okay, maybe I lied. <laughs> In the year of 2016, a manga called Fire Punch was released, and I'm pretty sure that everyone involved in the creative process of this probably did crack at some point. But what came out of this was three incredible mangakas, Tatsuki Fujimoto, Yuji Kaku, and my favorite of the bunch would definitely have to be Yukinobu Tatsu. And that's because he went off to make a manga called Dondedon. And when I say this is my favorite thing to have come out in the last year, I fucking mean it. I'm gonna ask you to take a second to just look at this panel that I put in front of you, and then I want you to understand that your eyes are not deceiving you. These are real panels from Dondadon. Beethoven and Mozart are both canonical characters in this manga, as well as the Loch Ness Monster. And that's not it. You've got a giant wooden sumo god, you've got aliens, crabs, the world's fastest grandma, as well as the world's hottest grandma, and at some points they just fuse together. Like it's Dragon Ball Z. Dondadon starts off with two high schoolers that are hoping to uncover the mysteries behind modern day conspiracies that we have. Aliens, ghosts, or spirits. Only for the both of them to find out that just about all of those things are real. And not just all of those things, it gets so much weirder. Allow me to describe to you what the experience of reading this manga feels like. Imagine you put all the tropes you normally see in a Shonen Jump series, and then let's turn those tropes into a person. Now give that person a tab of acid. That's Dondedon. My favorite types of manga all have one thing in common. I love reading something that feels like it was made by a clinically deranged person. And it's for that exact reason that I love this series. It probably has the wildest first chapter I think I've ever read in my life. And it's not so much that the manga starts off so strong, I think it's so good because of what the story eventually becomes. The ridiculous journey that these two end up going through is unforgettable. I wish I was joking when I tell you that the plot of this manga is that they're looking for this dude's ball sack. If you like Chainsaw Man, you will love this manga. If you like Gantz, you will love this manga. If you like the new hit series, Me and Roboco, then... <coughs> I mean... I guess you'll like it. All I ask is for Donadon to be on more people's radar. It's great. Actually, no, fuck that. It's perfect. The character dynamics are perfect. The plot is stupid. The monsters they deal with make no sense. I love it. Calling it over the top would be an understatement. This is now the millionth time that I've mentioned this manga on this channel. So if you haven't read it yet, just know that you are the problem. Okay, I didn't actually mean that last part. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, that's the, that's the video. Um, if you couldn't tell, it's a little bit over-edited, uh, as usual, um, but thanks for watching. It would be weird if I didn't acknowledge the fact that there's a lot more of you here now. So, uh, to those of you, I hope you enjoy your stay, and just know that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing half the time.